Welcome back to crew. Christian's rising up. It's good to see you all again. Even though I can't see you, I'm glad you can see me because we have some exciting, encouraging words for you today. We want you to know that we love you and that we miss you so much and that we continue to record these videos because we want you to have the life, um, the best life, the life that God has planned for you and purpose for you. And we want to just encourage you in any way we can. So as we reach out to you, please respond to our text messages answer our phone calls. If someone emails you, respond to the email. Let us know that you're getting a text message because we wanna hear from you and we wanna stay connected with you throughout this COVID season, throughout the many challenges that we're all facing right now. We want uh, to know exactly how you are doing. So as you receive different text messages or phone calls from um, our workers, from our servants here, from Mr. Jeremiah or Mr. Nate or Mr. Sampson or Ms. Fabiola or Ms. Shikar, Ms. Sanja or myself or Mr. Fonzo or whoever it may be that's on our team, you know who we are. Um, let us know that you are okay and how you're doing. This is a new school year, and so we just want to know and check in with you. We plan to meet really soon, um, sooner than you think. And so we're getting everything ready in the building here, and we will be socially distant, but we will meet soon. Let's start with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for today. We thank you, God, for your word that gives us life and health, God, into our soul, God, into our spirit, man, God. We thank you, God. Teach us today, God, so we'll learn and that we'll grow in you, God, and that we'll be better people for you. We thank you, God, for our family that you've placed us in. We just ask you right now to help us in those situations with our family that we see so much of right now because we are either quarantined or just in the house a lot. So help us, God, with our families. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Speaking of families, um, growing up, I used to watch um, some TV with some families on it, and there were different families, like some of you may have heard of, like Family Matters, um, Full House, they even came out with Fuller House, um, what some other ones? The Huxables, I don't know if you ever heard of the Huxable family, but I used to want to be a part of the Huxable family. Matter of fact, I know most people used to want to be in the Huxville family. Like they, the father was a doctor, the mother was a lawyer, they were rich, they live in New York. It was just like perfect, it was ideal. But the reality of it is, is that there aren't really any perfect family. And most families, unfortunately, aren't even ideal. Most families are just real. Your family is probably just a real family. Some days it may seem ideal, some days it might even seem perfect, but most days it's just real. For me growing up, it was, um, my family life growing up was uh, quite interesting. You know, when I was a kid, you're young, you rarely notice anything that's happening in your family. And as you start getting older, uh, you start finding out more information, not necessarily that your parents tell you, but you find out information. As for me, I had three older siblings. So they started telling me some information or they started acting real sneaky and not telling me information. Um, but for my elementary school years, they were perfect. I went to Oak Hill Elementary School, go Eagles. We were orange and white. I, I still love everything about my elementary years, um, for the most part. Um, my middle school years were three years of um, a lot of discomfort, not because of my family, but just because of switch up in, in school life. When I got into high school is when things really took a real negative turn in my family. By this time, my dad was a pastor. Um, and, um, my brother actually was incarcerated for the first time. And um, incarcerated means, you know, jailed. He was put in jail. And uh, my older sister, my older sister got pregnant when she was 15. Um, and then a couple of years later, um, my next older sister, a few years later, uh, got pregnant when she um, also was 15 and um, had her first child at 16. And um, life really just started to be a little different in our household. Um, family dinners were different. Um, to put it at best, our, our family was broken. Our family was fractured. My brother um, continued to be in and out of jail or prison. Um, my sisters continued um, to have children. Um, uh, and one of my sisters lived in the house with me uh, when she had her 
first son and life was just really different. Um, as I continued to get older through high school, um, when it was time for me to take my SAT and it was time for me to take my ACT, I took both of them. And the night before both, I took both of those tests, there were police in my house for one of my siblings. Um, the first time was for my brother. He had a warrant out for his arrest and they came and knocked on our door in the middle of the night looking for him. And then the next time was because in the middle of the night, my parents realized that my baby sister had snuck someone in our house. And so they were upset and they called the police. Um, I share this with you because you're my family. You're my church family. But I share this with you also because to show you that no family is perfect. Families, most for the most part, are real. And even in the Bible, God gives us examples of families <laughs> that have some stuff. They are fractured, they are broken also, but this one particular family we're talking about is the family that Jesus came out of. Jesus, okay? So even though Jesus is a perfect man and God in the form of man, he came from a family and his family was kind of messed up generations even before he was even born. Because in one way or another, Every family is fractured. Every family is broken. Um, either your family may have constant, constant tension, or it may have secrets, or it may just be a lot of discord. No one's talking to each other. People are slamming doors. It may be a blended family where you may not get along with your stepmom or your stepdad. You may feel like um, your parents shouldn't have never divorced and you just want your parents back together, but maybe they've remarried. Um, you may be upset constantly with something that your sibling may do. But there are examples of in the Bible where families have been broken too. And in one of these families, Jesus came. Jesus came through a family that was broken. Jesus came through the family of Abraham. And Abraham, even though today we're gonna to talk about Abraham's grandsons, but Abraham had some drama himself. First of all, Abraham uh, was told by God that he would be the father of many nations, and he was. But by that time, Abraham was an old man and couldn't have any kids, and neither could his wife. So his wife, Sarah, couldn't have any kids, and she actually laughed when she was told that you were, she was gonna have kids. And so Abraham, being the man he was, and being how things were set up in the Bible, decided to take matters in his own hand. And with his uh, concubine, what they call it concubine, or with a, a, a kind of like a separate wife um, that he legally had, but was not the same as his wife, Sarah, they had a child. So he had a child with Hagar. And there was so much discord between Sarah and Hagar because he had this child that Hagar ended up having to leave and leave with her son. So she became a single mama way back in the Old Testament because of family drama. So anyway, Abraham eventually um, did have that son that he was promised and he had his son. His son name was Isaac. And Isaac w had two sons and their two sons were named Jacob and Esau. And so we find ourselves in Genesis chapter 25. If you want to turn to it in your Bible app, follow along uh, or the words on the screen. Genesis chapter 25 verses 27 through 34 is where we're going to pick up. And I'll be reading from the NIV version. Um, but just kind of give you a little background as you look for that. Um, Jacob and Esau were very two, two very different brothers. Kind of like Cain and, Cain and Abel were different. Jacob and Esau were very different. Um, Jacob was more of a poet, uh, artist, um, more kind of hanging around his mom. Maybe you could say he was a mama's boy. I would say he was a mama's boy. Anyway, there's nothing wrong with mama's boys, but yeah, that's what Jacob was. Um, and then there was Esau. Esau was you know, out there kind of like a rough rider, you know, very um, hands-on, um, like go ahead and, and go out there and kill his own uh, dinner, bring it home, cook, uh, have somebody cook it up. He was that man's man kind of person, warrior, hunter. So they were two different. Esau was the oldest brother, which means in biblical times that he was entitled to the, what's called the birthright. It's like if your parents are leaving a will for two siblings, but the older brother always got more. He usually got double the money and he usually became the patriarch of the family. He usually became the person in the family that can make the decisions for everyone with that birthright. So Esau had that because he was the firstborn. Even though they were twins, he was the firstborn. So he had that birthright. 
But Jacob, Jacob wanted that birthright. So let's go um, and, and t let's read here. It says the boys grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was content to stay at home among the tents. Isaac, that was their father, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau. But Rebecca, that was their mother, loved Jacob, mama's boy. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country famished. He was real hungry, y'all. He said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. Jacob replied, first, sell me your birthright. Look, I'm about to die, Esau said. What's the birthright to me? But Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and he drank, and then he got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. So this is a classic older sibling, younger sibling drama. The younger sibling wants something, but the older sibling already got it. So the younger sibling always finds a way to get it. <laughs> Any of you experiencing that in your family? So fast forward, Esau, Isaac, their father is dying. And Jacob, in fact, did get the birthright when um, Isaac died. It's like that will that he got. In response, Esau was very bitter and very upset and actually threatened to kill Jacob. And because of that, Jacob ran away and um, with no plans to come back, just left home. So God knew their mess and how fractured and broken they were, but he didn't turn away from them. He used them anyway. Thousands of years later in the book of Hebrews, their family is brought up again and it talks about them as a celebration of faith. Their story is a part of the lineage and the family of God, of Jesus. And so Hebrews 11, 20 NIV version says, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regards to their future. Here's what's amazing about this. It's, it's not celebrating their dysfunction. I mean, we had somebody here threaten their life, threaten their sibling life, wanted to kill him. It was lying. The way he got his birthright, he lied and, and tricked the dad to give it to him. It was a mess. It was drama. So Hebrews isn't celebrating that. What they are saying is that every family story can be rewritten. God can take dysfunction from any family and bring good out of it. From God's perspective, there is no family that you can count out. There's no person that you can count out. You can, it can change. Things can happen for the better. So your family matters even when it's broken, even when it's fractured, even when things aren't going the way that you wanted to go, even when your parents don't say the right things to you, or maybe they're not there for you when you wanted them to be, don't count them out. Don't count your family out. Even if your siblings drive you crazy, don't count them out forever. Don't count out yourself. Don't isolate yourself. Don't run away. Um, don't uh, close the door to your room and don't answer to respond to their text messages or just ignore them all day long. Your family matters even though you may be going through some dysfunction. If you need to step away to keep yourself safe though, do that. If someone's causing bodily harm to you or emotionally um, verbal abuse and you need to step away, please get yourself out of that situation. There are hotline numbers that you can call for protection if you need be. I'm not saying um, stay in a dangerous situation, but there's a difference between dangerous and annoying, okay? If your siblings are just being annoying, that's different. If your parents are just being frustrating, that's different. But if they're hurting you uh, physically, uh, please um, reach out for help. So don't isolate yourself. Don't give up on your family. Don't give up on yourself. Do believe that God is working out everything for your good. Do believe that God can take this dysfunction in your family because your family matters. Do stay connected. Stay connected to your family. All of these things happen in my family, but I'm still connected to my, most of my family. Um, my siblings, like I said, they end up, my, my older sisters had uh, sons um, 
I love my nephews. I see them, I, I text them on their birthdays. I, we sp usually spend Christmas time together in South Carolina. I still am very connected with, my, with a lot of my family. But if I can keep it real with you, I haven't seen my oldest sister in probably over a year. And so there are parts of my family that are still kind of fractured and still kind of broken. And because this is on YouTube, if my sister happens to see this, I just want to say to her that I love her and that I miss her and that God can still work out the dysfunction in our family because our family matters. God takes dysfunction and he can turn it into good. He did it for the family of Jesus. This was Jesus's family. They had all of this drama and he can do it in your family. There is still good that can come out of your family and your life. So let's take it to God. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you God for this lesson today. We thank you God for an example in your word that families were broken and dysfunctional, but you brought good out of it anyway, God. So we just trust you God today to bring good out of the, dis the dysfunction in our families, God. We just ask you for help right now to stay connected with our family, to trust you, God, that you're working in our family anyway, no matter what the dysfunction is, no matter how broken our family may seem. We thank you, God, that you are forever with us. Help us, God, to continue to love you and to trust you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Until next time, we love you. See you later.